Let's have a conversation about Sika, Singapore's free trade agreement with India. Singapore has two key resources, location and people. Since independence, we have been developing these assets to grow our economy. Using our location well, we have become an important sea and air hub. But our neighbours have good locations too, and they have bigger populations. And so the competition is intense. To create good jobs for Singaporeans, we then decided to also become a manufacturing and services hub to export to the world. But most countries have tariffs and taxes. Therefore, we pursued a strategy of free trade agreements in order to succeed in exporting goods. And we have to move faster than other countries to make this work. Our network of FTAs has reduced tariffs on our goods and provided a stable regulatory environment for trade in services and investment. That is key to keeping our exports competitive. FTAs also help us bring in foreign investment. International companies that set up here are attracted by our connectivity to the world through our FTAs. But what are the benefits to Singapore? From 2005 to 2019, foreign direct investment increased by almost 500%. 750 MNCs have made Singapore their regional headquarters and we have the largest number of jobs from global Fortune 500 companies amongst key Asia hubs. Most importantly, when local companies and foreign companies in Singapore grow, there are more and better paying jobs for everyone. In the last 15 years, we have created 380,000 local PME jobs. So where does Sika fit in? Singapore has signed 26 FTAs. Sika is just one of them. Since Sika was signed in 2005, Singapore company's investment in India has grown nearly 50 times. In 2019, these companies supported a total of 97,000 local jobs in Singapore. At the same time, Indian companies also came here to boost the infocom sector. Two serious falsehoods were made about Sika. The first falsehood is that Sika allows the free flow of Indian nationals as ICTs. ICTs must still meet our work pass qualifying criteria. At present, there are only about 500 Indian ICTs. Many FTAs allow ICTs, and this is not unique to Sika. The second falsehood is that Sika has allowed 127 professions free access to Singapore. The listing of 127 categories does not confer any free pass to Indian nationals. Singapore will eventually decide who enters the country based on our needs and rules. Is the number of Indian nationals working in Singapore a result of Sika? No. Whether someone is hired to work in Singapore depends on the industry demand for talent, not Sika. Sika does not lead to a more favourable treatment for Indian nationals. But you see many foreign professionals in Singapore. So why are they here? Let's consider a company that wants to set up here. Say it needs 3,000 people, but finds only 2,500 in Singapore, because we simply do not have that many people. It will need to bring in 500 people from overseas. If we say no to these 500 foreigners, the investment wouldn't come in. But if we say yes, that's 2,500 more jobs for Singaporeans. From 2005 to 2020, the number of employment pass holders increased by 112,000. Over this period, the number of local PMEs increased by more than 380,000. However, there are real challenges on the ground. First, Singaporeans may face competition with foreign PMEs at the individual company level. We can't completely shield Singaporeans from competition, but we must ensure that the competition is fair. 
This is achieved through regular updates of our work pass criteria. For example, in 2020, we raised the minimum qualifying salary for EPs from $3,600 to $4,500. This salary requirement also increases with age to provide sufficient protection for our mature workers. The bottom line is that we want foreigners with the valuable skills we lack, and not because they are cheaper. Second, there is a mismatch of skills. You see a job opening, but you don't have the qualifications. We invest heavily in skills upgrading and job facilitation. As of April 2021, nearly 110,000 locals have secured jobs and skills opportunities through the SG United Jobs and Skills Package. 3. There are issues on the ground that we need to fix. We have seen some foreign nationals here with fake degrees. Their work passes were cancelled. We have seen unfair hiring practices where a foreign department head tries to hire friends from his country. That is wrong. We have the Fair Consideration Framework to guard against discriminatory hiring practices and monitor nationality concentration at the company level. Errant employers have been penalised and MOM keeps a close watch on this. Four. Some people are concerned over the number of foreigners in the infocom sector. The reality is, we don't have enough locals to do all the back-end infocom tech support for our companies. Without these foreign workers, the companies they serve would simply relocate to places where they can find the support. So yes, we have more EPs. But that is because we brought in a lot of investment and created many jobs for Singaporeans. Today, our citizen unemployment rate is low at 3.8%. And we have 60% of locals in PMET jobs because of our economic policies. <laughs>